everyone, uh, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Helena and today we're making Swedish cabbage rolls. I'm going to show you my grandma's uh, plus 100 year old recipe, uh, the original one, and I'll tell you the difference of my way of making them. So you can do both or half and half or choose the one that sounds better to you. Now let's get started. Now, first of all, I put on a big cooking pan or cooking pot here uh, with enough water in it to cover a full head of white cabbage. Now, um, first we're taking away like dirty, a uh, little bit damaged leaves here. We'll just take them off and uh, the rest should be good to go. It's a little bit here. Ah, it's not worthwhile taking off for that. Now, next, I put a corkscrew in here, in the, in the, in the root. Why? Easy to lift out. We've got, once the water is boiling here, we're going to put this whole head in here, uh, make sure it's covered, and we're going to let it steam for about seven minutes at the most. All we want is for these leaves, be able to roll them off and be soft enough so that we can form them into a shape okay uh, you can put like a heavy lid or something on to make sure that that cabbage bowl actually stays inside the water and it's not floating around now in the meantime we want to prepare our ground meat um, in this case here i've got a total of about 800 grams in here and here's the secret one of them uh, make sure you're using 50 percent or at least or, or max 60 percent of ground meat the other 50 or 40 percent should be ground pork why because the pork gives it a richer taste uh, it helps to loosen this up a bit and it's not it's this is not a hard mix this should be a loose mix once we're done with it, okay? Now, uh, mix this together. I do it with my hands. It's so much easier. Uh, then we're adding on cooked rice. Should be all together about maybe 8, 10 tablespoons. Well, 8, eight tablespoons should be fine. I've got some leftover rice here from the other day. So what I'm doing is just mixing it up with my hand. Put it in and we'll mix this all together. Uh, we'll be adding on here in a second. Here is one, uh, oops, one teaspoon of table salt, white, and we're also going to put in ground the black pepper, and we're going to put in two teaspoons of that. Here we go. Some of it's falling in already, so we're making two teaspoons. There we go, and one more. Now we're also adding some milk. Uh, we're gonna have to measure it as we go to make sure we don't put too much in there. Now up to here, this is the original recipe, my grandma's recipe. If you wanna leave it at that, then fine, and just keep following instructions after that. Now me, I'm adding on some raisins dry raisins in here uh, it's about 50 grams and i'm gonna add some uh, dry lingonberries in here as well i like to have mine a little bit sweeter and i'm putting in around 50 grams as well and now we're just gonna mix i mix with my hands and fingers finding that a lot easier now let's get our cabbage head out of the water. See, there we are. We just put this over here to have the water, most of the water sip out. So I'll leave it a little bit on the side for that to happen and then change to the other side. Now don't throw away the water left in the cooking pan. We'll be using some of that later. We can turn the stove off them. Taking the corkscrew out, I'm using a knife just to cut a bit around the edges here. 
of the root uh, that way we can loosen the leaves of this cabbage a lot easier okay and we're going to start by taking off the leaves easily so that they don't break there's one put that to the side here's a second one that we're putting to the side well you get the idea just keep cutting up the edges a bit so that way we can kind of peel this cabbage these cabbage leaves off I'm preparing a large frying pan I'm putting a bit of olive oil in here and I'm also adding a bit of real butter to fry this up with like this I still haven't got the frying pan on we're gonna make the the cabbage rolls first but preparing keep two now, this is what my mix looks like right now it's uh, loose I've added in all together about four deciliters of milk normal milk and um, we're just going to leave this to the side and work with our cabbage once it's cooled down a bit I also added uh, three of the inner leaves back into the still hot warm water where we cooked up the whole head just to loosen it up a little bit now i'm making a little cut right here at the very top of our leaf like here just to get that harder part that's still a little bit uh, have a little bit of the root left left in it sliding it off a bit uh, to make them more even to cook up okay next uh mix our uh mixing together here uh, move it around a little bit so that the milk is not loose in the bottom and then next we take a leaf like this here we're putting uh, a couple of tablespoons on here I'm gonna have to measure it up and put it to the side here there we go next thing is take the end part here move it up a bit end part and we just make sure it's in there and we're gonna roll these up take the sides put them in and roll up now this is what it looks like once it's rolled up and now we're gonna turn the stove on now with this having uh, melted down completely and with the uh, butter and oil heated up what we're going to do is take our cabbage rolls and we're going to use the part that's open and put it to the bottom of the frying pan towards the bottom just put them in now we're going to follow this procedure with our cabbage leaves until all of our mix is gone my frying pan is full I've turned the heat down to low temperature I still have meat left for I guess another four cabbage rolls uh, let's make sure this uh, stirs up fries up get a nice uh, brownish color to it soften up the uh, actual cabbage leaves a bit and then we're gonna put some uh, water the one that we used uh, boiling up the cabbage head with spread over and let cook uh, with a lid on on very low temperature to have them ready now i actually had to put the last part of my cabbage head back in the water to cook up for a few minutes uh, you might need to do that too it was too hard to work with the inner part uh, turn my cabbage rolls around in the frying pan now if you have a real stubborn cabbage leaf in there uh, by all means take a toothpick stick it in to make sure it molds together nicely uh, into a some kind of shape roll okay I would say uh, my uh, cabbage rolls have been frying on different sides for about uh, 12 maybe 15 minutes 
Now what we're going to do is take some of that water we have left from when we boiled the cabbage head and we're going to transfer it over to our frying pan. Gonna try to almost cover this with water. And we're gonna put a lid on and leave these to boil so that they cook up well and the cabbage gets loose, soft, and the meat is full. It's already boiling here. We leave it like this on low temperature and then I'm going to prepare the last cabbage rolls uh, soften up the leaves by now now if you if your cabbage uh, white cabbage it's like more greener uh, like the, I think they call it summer or autumn cabbage your cooking time will be a lot less maybe 15 minutes and if it's completely white like mine which they call the winter cabbage uh, you might have to cook this for around 30 minutes. Alrighty. I've now prepared my second smaller frying pan exactly the same way I did the first one and got the last of my cabbage rolls in here to fry up. The other ones are still boiling. Just check on the ones you put to boil first in the larger pan that the water hasn't evaporated. In that case you need to add some more on now our cabbage rolls with ground meat are ready now don't leave yet we're still making a gravy uh, sauce of what's left in that frying pan okay so the frying pan is back on low heat low temperature i'm adding a little bit of the water left over from uh, boiling up the uh, cabbage head here Two of these will do it and I'm going to take maybe like one tablespoon of soy sauce and go no salt needed when that one goes in and I'm going to shake over some uh, white flour or all-purpose flour just a bit of it And we're just going to put it in like this. Now having done this, we're going to need to move this around permanently. Permanently, listen to me. I will make sure that it doesn't uh, clog up. We're going to get, start getting uh, a thicker A thicker mix in here, okay? And all we've got left to do is to add some milk here. A bit of milk going in, little by little, okay? We don't want to thin this up again. All right, we can leave this to stir for like a minute. Add more milk in if needed. Now, this is our dish ready to serve. Uh, like with so many other Swedish dishes here, we serve this with a lingonberry jam sauce type or fresh ones if you have access to them. I have a recipe, a video out where I'm making this lingonberry on dry berries. 
and uh, I'm going to leave the link up in the corner here or if not in a picture underneath there or if not just go to my playlist and pick out that video uh, you can also put some of the Swedish canned cucumber I also have a video about that again I'll leave it up in the information box here or down underneath go in on my playlist check them out like the video if you liked it uh, let me know if you enjoy cooking with me leave me a comment underneath and uh, if you want more videos hit that subscribe button uh, I'm Helena it was uh, really nice cooking with you today and um, I will see you in the next video bon appetit